take chart number one, and we'll see what it has to say. There Jesus is talking about a witness, about bearing witness. And Jesus said, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. Don't you see? And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. Mr. McGee, do you know what in those teeth spells? It spells not. I know you know what it means. There's the Son of God said, I am not alone. The only difference in what God taught in the Garden of Eden and the devil was only a knock. God said, In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Oh, the old devil came along and said, In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt not surely die. The only difference in that verse in the teaching of my worthy opponent in Jesus Christ is a knock. Jesus said, And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. Well, who's with you then, uh, Jesus? But I am the Father that sent me. Isn't that two? If that isn't two, then I don't know what two would be. I am not alone. I want that to reign the heirs of every individual in this audience. I am not alone. And then he made up an uh, argument based it upon their law. He said, It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. The testimony of how many men, Jesus? The testimony of two men is true. And then he said, I am one that bears witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. If Jesus Christ didn't mean there's two in there, then Jesus Christ made a false argument based upon the fallacious premise. And we know Jesus Christ didn't do that. That would have been gross deception for him to have done that. He was talking to those Pharisees who denied him. And he said, If I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. It's also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one, and my Father is two. I am one that bears witness of myself, and the Father which set me bears witness of me. Now, don't you see that, my friend? That's just, that's just as easy as anything can be. That's an argument there. Now, Jesus Christ made the fair not enough to cost the preachers of this wide, wide world to break down. There he said, there's two of them. My testimony's got to be true. You've got to acknowledge it's true. Because your law says the testimony of two men is true, and I'm producing two that says I'm the son of God. Now, what's my opponent going to do with that? That's one of the things that you thought I would say that I did say. So we have it there. All right. I'm going to read a few other verses now before we pass on. He read from the ninth chapter of Isaiah. Well, I knew he would. And here's what he said, the sixth verse. When Isaiah said, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. And so he says, now there's the everlasting father. But he forgets that the, the uh, father applies to many people. The Jews back there spoke of Abraham as their father. They spoke of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if you hear a Jew today leading prayer in one of their synagogues, it's not unusual to hear him say, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, a leader was a father in any respect back in the old Jewish law. And so Isaiah, speaking of Jesus Christ as being a leader among the people, he said he'll be a father. He'll be the everlasting father. But that didn't mean that God the Father wasn't also a father. Well, now we're going to notice the next time thing. I want to read a few passages of Scripture. And then we'll get into some more diagrams or some more of these charts that we have. And uh, he says that God wasn't equal, that you can't have Jesus equal with God. Well, I so pity Paul didn't know that. You know, when Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, he didn't know that. If you think he did, you turn to the second chapter of Philippians and the fifth and sixth verses. And there you hear him say, Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God? Did you know that was in there, Mr. McGee? 
Well, if you did, you certainly stumbled over it. Yes, he said they couldn't be equal. The Apostle Paul said they are equal. He said that Jesus Christ thought it not mockery or robbery to be equal with God. Why do you think about that, Mr. McGee? Say, look at it. Why do you think about that? Read that. Philippians 2, 5 and 6. Find it for it, Mr. Erdman. Hand it over there to it. Equal with God. He said he couldn't be equal with God. Paul said he is equal with God. Now, you know he talks about what Toddy does and what Toddy doesn't do and what Toddy's going to do and what Toddy won't do. If I ever get caught in a trap like that, I'll tell you one thing Toddy will do, that is he'll go home. Yes. Paul says he's equal with God. Let me tell you, my friends, tonight, there's not a religious question that any man under the shining canopy of heaven can ask. That isn't answered in God's book. You just try it. There isn't a one. And he's got himself hanged now upon the can't be equal. Well, I'm going to read, I won't chart now, number 11. We're going to see there about some other. Chart number 11 was when Jesus was baptized. Now, I want you to notice this. There is a voice over there in the upper corner. And between the voice and Jesus down in the water being baptized, there is a dove. And if you'll turn to the 17th verse of the third chapter of Matthew, you'll see there that when Jesus was baptized, he came immediately up out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open, and a voice that this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And Jesus saw the Spirit descending from heaven in the form of a dove. How many were there there then? And you look right down at the bottom, and I have, Is Christ divided? If there were only one there, then we find that Jesus Christ is part of him in the water, part of him in heaven, and part of him coming down. Well, I want to read a few more past the scripture now. I've answered his scripture, and I want to read you some now to show you that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he was not the Father. In the second chapter of Acts, there when they met on the day of Pentecost, and my opponent over here agrees, that is the church. That is the first day of the church. That's when the church was born on the day of Pentecost. And there when that great phenomenon came and they began to hear uh, those people speak in other tongues, they began to deny it and say that these men are drunk. But Peter said, ye men of it, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you with signs and wonders which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and the wicked hands of crucified and slain whom God has raised up, for it was not possible that he should be hold of them. And he went on to say that David saw, foresaw him before his face. He was on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore, my heart rejoiced, my tongue was made glad, and moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer my flesh to see corruption. Now I want to point out the fact that Peter there shows too he shows the flesh and he shows the spirit. Thou wilt not leave my spirit in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one or thy, my flesh to see corruption. We've got two of them there. And he's talking about the two. You won't allow them to be to see corruption. And then again we hear him when he says, That God hath raised up that Jesus whereof we are all witnesses, therefore being exalted at the right hand of God, Exalted where? Exalted at the right hand of God, and having received the promise of the Holy Spirit, he shed forth this, which you now see and hear. Don't you see that, my friends? Why, of course you see it. I think now I'll read some from the Luke, the 23rd chapter and the 46th verse. There we hear Luke, when he was recording about Jesus being upon the cross. And just before Jesus Christ died, he raised his eyes to God and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Who was that? Who was that, Brother McGee? Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And then again we hear it. As he was upon the cross praying, and he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Does that sound like a man talking to himself? Oh, no, my friends, he's going to have to do better than that. Jesus Christ said, My God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? Now I want you to turn your 
attention to the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. There, when the Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Corinth, began with the 22nd verse, he said, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made up alive. Every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are his at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. Does that sound like he was talking about himself? He, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rules and all power and all authority. For he must reign until all enemies are under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he hath put all enemies under his feet. But when he said, All enemies are under you, under him, it is manifest that he is accepted who did put all under him. And when all have been subdued under him, then the Son himself 